Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. A logical and a systematic approach to solving organic chemistry problems for CSAR net. In this lecture, we will be looking at organic reaction mechanisms involving elimination reactions with electrophilic, nucleophilic or radical species. I am Professor Balaji, currently working at Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayamprabha, MHRD, New Delhi. In this session, we will be looking at organic reaction mechanisms involving elimination reactions with electrophilic, nucleophilic or radical species. Let us look at the first problem. This problem appeared in December 2019. So, the question given is even CB mechanism is followed in the reaction of four options are given here. The first one is 2 bromopentane with the tertiary, 2 bromopentane with potassium tertiary butoxide to give pent 2 in. The second one is nitromethane with the benzaldehyde in the presence of KOH to give beta nitrostyrene. The third one is bromobenzene with sodamide to give aniline. And the last option is parachloro nitrobenzene with sodium methoxide to give para nitro anisole. So, four reactions are given. And out of these four reactions, which one follows even CB mechanism is the one we are going to find it out. So, the textual reactions let us look at in the chemical sense. Uh, the chemical structures of the compounds are given here. So, the bromo derivative undergoes elimination to give an alkene. So, this is reaction number 1. And in the second one, an aldehyde is converted into beta nitrostyrene. In this particular case, benzaldehyde is converted into beta nitrostyrene. And in the third one, a bromo group is replaced by a amino group. And in the fourth one, a chloro group is replaced by a methoxy group. So, there are four different uh, nucleophilic reactions are given and we are going to find it out uh, which one involves E1CB mechanism. So, before we get into solving the problem, we need to know what is the E1CB mechanism which we are going to find it out. So, in the E1CB elimination reaction that is elimination unimolecular conjugate base mechanism, the elimination occurs under basic condition. So, this is uh, the requirement for that E1 CB mechanism. And the second one is where the hydrogen to be removed is relatively acidic while the leaving group such as hydroxyl or alkoxy is a relatively poor one. So, this is the most crucial one for the E1 CB mechanism. So, we need a basic condition. We also need a acidic proton and the leaving group should be a poor leaving group. So, that is the condition for even CB mechanism and we know bromine or halogens are a really good uh, leaving groups. So, we can uh, by looking at the problem, we can easily identify the first case cannot be the even CB mechanism because we have a very good leaving group that is a bromo 1 and in the third one, we also have a bromo group and uh, that is also a good leaving group and in the last one, we have a chlorine which is also a good leaving group. So, that means uh, the option 1, 3 and 4 may not be the right choice and the only one which uh, is um, remaining is the second one and here we do not actually see what is the leaving group because this is a two step mechanism. So, when we look at this reaction, we will find it out how the reaction actually proceeds. So, based on that, we have to identify which one is actually going to follow E1 CB. So, uh, roughly we can assume that it may most probably be the second reaction because all the other three options are actually having a very good leaving group. So, let us look at the reactions. The first one is a, a strong base sodium tertiary butoxide abstracts the most acidic proton which is present here and with the concomitant loss of the bromide group. So, this reaction is basically called as the anti elimination and this is the characteristics of E2 mechanism. So, this reaction does not follow E1 CB mechanism because this is mainly the E2 mechanism that is being followed because 
the base abstracts the proton and the leaving group leaves all happens in a single step. This is like a concerted mechanism. So, this reaction does not follow even CB mechanism. So, when we go to the next one, the next one is actually a two step reaction. So, in the first step, a nitromethane reacts with potassium hydroxide to give the anion. So, the formation of the anion is the most uh, important one. So, here how the anion can be formed is basically the hydroxide ion abstracts a methyl proton and once the methyl proton is removed, we get an anion and this anion can be stabilized by an electron withdrawing group that is the nitro group. So, this negative charge comes into resonance stabilization with the electron withdrawing group. So, this is quite easily formed and once an anion is formed, the other reacting substrate is an aldehyde. So, aldehyde has a electrophilic carbon atom because we have a nucleophilic oxygen which pulls the electrons, the pi bonded electron towards itself. So, making this particular carbonyl carbon electron deficient or we can generally say this is having a delta positive charge. So, the negative nucleophile can easily attack the positive carbon. So, that is how the reaction happens and we end up with the hydroxy nitro compound. Uh, this reaction is basically called as a Henry reaction. So, the formation of the nitro alcohol is the first step that is happening in this reaction. So, if we move on to the next step, the next step in the presence of a strong base because the reaction is carried out in the presence of potassium hydroxide. So, we still have a base. So, the base first abstract the acidic proton. So, in the formed beta nitro alcohol, we have a hydrogen atom here which is the most acidic one because this, this is adjacent or uh, near to the electron withdrawing nitro group. So, the moment an anion is formed on this particular carbon, this can be easily stabilized by the electron withdrawing nitro group. So, that is the reason the first step is the removal of this acidic proton by the base. So, that leads to the formation of the uh, carbanion. So, this carbanion can now undergo the loss of hydroxyl group. So, the flow of electrons are shown here, which leads to the beta nitrostyrene that is the final product. So, the elimination product is obtained in this particular case. So, here uh, as I mentioned the anion, why this acidic proton is easily removed because once the anion is formed, this anion can be easily stabilized by the electron withdrawing nitro group. So, this is the driving force for this particular reaction. So, in this particular case, once we have an anion, that also can facilitate the loss of the hydroxy group because this can again now uh, form a conjugated bond with this uh, electron withdrawing nitro group. So, since this is a two step reaction and in this uh, second step, hydroxy group which is a poor leaving group is lost in the elimination step. So, this exactly follows the even CB mechanism. So, in the even CB mechanism, basically the formation of the conjugate base is the most important case and that is what is happening in this reaction. So, we can say the second reaction is the one which follows even CB mechanism. And when we move on to the next uh, couple of reaction, so the first reaction, uh, the third reaction is the reaction with the bromobenzene. So, the bromobenzene in the presence of sodamide, a strong base loses a hydrogen atom, uh, the base abstract this hydrogen atom and we end up with a benzene derivative. So, this is a uh, triple bond that is formed in the aromatic system. So, this benzene intermediate is formed. So, the first step is elimination of the leaving group because the base abstracts this acidic proton and this goes here and this is lost, the bromine is lost. So, all the things happens in the single step. So, we end up with a benzene derivative which is having a triple bond. And what is the next step? Next step is the addition of the nucleophile. So, here in this particular case, the NH2 minus adds to one of the carbon and we end up with the aniline as our product. So, this reaction actually follows a elimination addition mechanism. So, this is not uh, following the E1CB mechanism. And if we move on to the last option here, 
the para chloro nitro benzene is treated with sodium methoxide so here methoxide anion is a strong nucleophile which is going to attack this particular carbon so we end up with a carbanion on the adjacent uh, carbon so this can be stabilized by the nitro group which is present at the para position so we have we can write various resonance structures for this particular intermediate and in the charge reversal step what happens is this negative charge moves and with the concomitant loss of the chloro group so we end up with the methoxy substitution so that means this reaction follows addition the addition of the nucleophile is the first step that is happening followed by the elimination of the leaving group so this also follow these two reactions the reaction 3 and 4 are aromatic nucleophilic substitution reactions they follow different mechanisms so these two reactions also does not follow the E1CB mechanism. So what we can finally say is the E1CB reaction is followed only in the case of beta nitro, beta nitro styrene formation. So the rest of the things follow different type of elimination mechanism. So we can say that the option B is the correct answer for this particular question. So let us move on to the next problem. So here. Uh, this question was asked in December 2011. So the correct sequence of reactions to be employed in the following transformation. There are four uh, reactions that are happening A, B, C, D and the reagent for each reaction is given here. We have a alpha, beta unsaturated uh, ketone that is given as the starting material and we have a alkene ketone as the final product. So of course uh, the cyclic system is broken in the final product. So we will have to look at the mechanism how the reaction actually proceeds. So we have four different uh, reagents are given, four options with the four different reagents are given. In the first one we have MCPPA. So MCPPA is generally used for the epoxidation reaction. And the second step is reaction with uh, tocyl hydrazine. So the tocyl hydrazine is generally used to convert the carbonyl group into tocyl hydrazones and the next reaction is the acid, catal uh, acid catalyzed reaction. So we will have to see what is that reaction actually occurring. We will see while we look at the mechanism and the last step is hydrogen with the palladium uh, palladized barium sulphate which is the uh, negative catalyst that is used in this one. So or we can call this as a poison that is used. So in other words, this is a selective reduction. Hydrogen and palladized barium sulfate combination is used for Rosenman reduction that is conversion of acid chloride to aldehyde. So uh, multiple reductions, for example, a triple bond to a, a saturated uh, the system is not possible using this particular catalyst. So these are all the first conditions and in the second one we have a hydrogen peroxide in the presence of sodium hydroxide. So that means this is basically a, a basic conditions for this epoxidation reaction and the second step is hydrazine and the third step is acetic acid and the fourth one is hydrogen in the palladized carbon. So that means if we can assume what are all the different types of reactions uh, that may be possible are maybe uh, the epoxidation will epoxidize the double bond so that is reaction number one and in the second case we have hydrazine so substituted hydrazines so they will form the hydrazone with the carbonyl group and the next one is reaction with the acids or in one particular case we have a base so either acid or base will open up this uh, epoxide ring and maybe some rearrangement is going to happen we will see what is that rearrangement and then finally we may end up with the triple bonded system uh, maybe or maybe we will end up with a double bond system but since the product has a double bond then most probably we will be having a triple bonded system. Hydrogen and the use of palladized carbon leads to complete reduction of olefin since the product has a double bond so option 2 and 3 are ruled out. Since Lindler catalyst leads to cis reduction option 4 is possible. Uh, let us look at uh, the reaction in detail. So if you look at um, all the options that are given, the starting material is a alpha beta unsaturated system. So in the previous cases we have seen when the epoxidation actually happens, 
for an alpha beta unsaturated system to undergo epoxidation we do need a basic conditions so in other words what we can say is option number 1 and 3 are ruled out because these are neutral conditions so, so metachlorofluorobenzoic acid cannot uh, epoxidize uh, alpha beta unsaturated system so we can just rule out these two possibilities now we are left with only two and four options and if you look at the second case two and four in the second example we have hydrazine for the hydrozone formation and in the fourth one fourth option we have tocyl hydrazine that is a substituted hydrazine for the hydrozone formation so we will have to now choose between any one of them but in the product we still have the carbonyl group that is present. So if we use hydrazine, generally hydrazine undergoes, um, I mean is used for the reduction of carbonyl compounds. So wolf Pushner reduction if you assume that uses hydrazine, uh, it is a very drastic condition but uh, it can reduce the carbonyl group to the alkane. So direct uh, reduction of uh, alkane, uh, carbonyl group to the alkane is possible using hydrazine that is the wolf Pushner reduction. So in in that case we can assume that maybe this may not be a possible option because um, we still have a carbonyl group in our final product. So that means the option 2 may also not the right choice. So that, that is left with then we have only the fourth one is the option. We are going to find it out how the actually the whole process happens and whether the fourth is the correct option we are going to see now. So as I mentioned earlier and we have also seen earlier, the first step is under basic condition because sodium hydroxide in the presence of uh, hydrogen peroxide and the sodium hydroxide combination actually gives the hydrogen peroxide anion is formed, so hydroperoxide anion. So the hydroperoxide anion is formed in the first step and uh, we have a alpha beta unsaturated system. So in these kind of systems you know the carbonyl group pulls the electron, the pi bonded electron towards itself. So uh, there is a little polarization of the bond so that to compensate that this particular uh, double bond uh, uh, gives its electron so that this particular carbon becomes something like a electrophilic in nature. So we have a nucleophilic uh, anion and we have a electrophilic carbon. So obviously we know that this nucleophilic uh, uh, hydroperoxide anion will attack this particular carbon with uh, complete shift of electrons as shown here will take place. And then what we end up is basically the hydroxy anion, the, uh, the oxide anion is formed with uh, the introduction of the hydrox hydroperoxide unit into this particular system. So uh, what is the next step obviously this is a quite unstable intermediate so the next step is obviously going to be the charge reversal. So when the charge reversal happens this hydroxide anion is lost. So in other words what we can say is during the charge reversal step we can see that the epoxide is formed in this particular case. So this is the first reaction with the hydrogen peroxide and the sodium hydroxide. So uh, the reagent A is actually consumed up to here. So what is the next one? We are going to use the hydrazine. So the next step is use of tocyl hydrazine. So when the tocyl hydrazine reacts with the carbonyl compound, we end up with the, we have an epoxy group, nothing happens to the epoxy group, only the carbonyl group is converted into the tocyl hydrazone. So in this case, we have a paratoline sulfonyl uh, derivative or the group is formed. So the product is basically epoxy sulfonyl hydrazone. So that is the compound that is formed. This is the intermediate. So this is the step B. And what is the next step? The next step is use of acid conditions or acidic conditions. So uh, acidic acid actually provides H plus ion. So when we have that H plus ion, this oxygen is uh, relatively nucleophilic in nature. So the proton adds to this particular epoxy oxygen. So this is the next step that is happening and once it happens we already know that this is quite unstable species. So somewhere something has to happen. Let us see what will happen. So in this particular case this hydrogen is actually lost to compensate the positive charge on this particular oxygen. So the shift of electrons uh, happens as shown here that leads to the vinyl diazine intermediate. So this is the vinyl diazine intermediate that is formed and uh, this is the double bond. So in this particular case 
uh, the epoxide opens up. Epoxide can open up in uh, two different directions and generally in this particular case it opens up on this particular carbon. So here I had just numbered the system for our easy understanding of how the next step going to take place. This does not follow IUPAC nomenclature. This is only a representation for us to understand how the carbon atoms are connected. So we start from the hydroxy carbon. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all the cyclopropyl systems uh, carbons are numbered and then we also have the alkene carbon which is in the exocyclic condition. So we also uh, label that as a 6. So these are all the 6 carbon and now flow of electrons are actually going to take place. So in this particular case this hydroxy groups uh, hydrogen is lost which in turn opens up this particular cyclopropyl uh, cyclopentyl system. So when the cyclopentyl system opens up we actually have a double bond already present here when this bond also breaks and gives the electron so we are going to end up with the uh, trice um, alkynic system or a triple bond and uh, with uh, this nitrogen carbon bond is broken and uh, this tosyl group goes as a tosylate to toluene sulfonate anion so we end up with the formation of nitrogen gas. So these are all the uh, product byproducts formed in this particular reaction and uh, this results in the triple bond. So the triple bond is formed between carbon number 5 and 6. So that is the reason we have uh, numbered the cyclopentyl system so that we know exactly uh, how the bonds are actually formed and broken. So here the oxygen bearing carbon uh, we started number 1. So here again the carbonyl group is in that same carbon. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 there is a triple bond between 5 and 6. So this is how the third reaction that is reaction with acetic acid happens. So we have done all the three reactions and the last one which is left out is basically the palladium catalyzed reaction. So here we are using the Lindlar's catalyst. Lindlar's catalyst is nothing but hydrogen in the presence of palladium and the calcium carbonate. So this combination is called the Lindlar's catalyst and this is a very very specific catalyst for the reduction of a triple bond to double bond. So here we have only the partial reduction of the triple bond happens. So we end up with the Z alkene. So that means this is basically the cis alkene is formed in this particular case. So the overall reactions, all the four reactions, we started off with the alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compound giving a, another uh, alkenic ketone. This particular reaction is called as the eschen mosher tanabe fragmentation reaction. So basically this is a tandem nucleophilic addition and the fragmentation reaction. Uh, this is starting from the cyclic enone, we end up with the open chain system. The driving force for all these reactions are basically the epoxide ring has a strain. So uh, the rearrangement which occurs in the case of uh, acetic acid catalyzed condition, why it occurs is simply because the strained epoxide ring can easily open up and also the cyclopentyl ring system also can open up. So that means the ring strains are actually relieved. So that is one of the driving force for the first uh, reaction. And for the rearrangement reaction to occur, the loss of nitrogen that is molecular nitrogen is another crucial driving force and these are all the reasons why that reactions actually proceed very uh, efficiently and uh, finally we end up with the tethered alkyl, uh, alkynyl ketone and so what we can say is the option 4 is the correct one. So the first step is the epoxidation of the alpha beta unsaturated system followed by the hydrozone formation of the carbonyl group, then acid catalyzed rearrangement with the concomitant loss of nitrogen and uh, sulfonate anion and finally the reduction of the triple bond to give the double bond that is especially the Z selective reduction using lind lords catalyst. So these are all the various um, reaction by which the whole A, B, C, D occurs. So we can say the fourth option is the correct one for this particular reaction. So let us move on to the next problem. So here we are talking about the question that appeared in December 2013. The major product formed in the following reaction sequences, it is given here. We have here again, we have an alpha beta unsaturated system. 
we have hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide unlike the previous uh, example here the reagent is directly given so the first one is alpha beta epoxidation of alpha beta unsaturated system which occurs in the presence of a base sodium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide and the second step is also tocyl hydrazine this also we have seen and the third one is a ter potassium tertiary butoxide in the previous example we had seen acetic acid is used for the rearrangement but in this case potassium tertiary butoxide is given as the uh, reagent for this reaction and the last step is same palladized uh, calcium carbonate in the presence of quinoline this is the Linlard catalyst system so this reaction is exactly like the one what we have seen earlier but the only difference is in the previous case we had the acid catalyzed rearrangement in this case we have a base so we are going to look at how the base carries out the same reaction so here four options are given a b c d we have to now find it out what is the what is going to be the final product so if you look at the first system this is basically the trans isomer so uh, we had seen the Lindlard catalyst generally produces Z selective alkenes or cis alkene so in other words we can say a is not the product we can rule out and in the c the carbonyl group is lost but in the previous case we had exactly seen the carbonyl group is retained so this is also not the problem and the last one is a completely reduced system with the carboxylic acid this is also ruled out so in other words what we can say is and again in this particular case there is a, a ring contraction also happens in this particular case so maybe the reaction may uh, this product may be formed but not under these particular conditions so in other words what we can say is uh, by looking at the product the distribution the first one is ruled out because trans the other option c and d are ruled out because they don't have the carbonyl group so then we can easily say what is the product is going to be b so this option we can easily figure it out but then we are going to uh, find out how the potassium tertiary butoxide actually uh, facilitates this particular reaction so if you look at the details since we have seen uh, how the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound is converted to the epoxide and the tocyl hydrogen we will not look into that detail mechanism because we had already seen that so we will go to the next step where we are using a potassium tertiary butoxide which is a base so in the previous case when we were using acetic acid basically this epoxide oxygen was protonated in that particular step in this case when we are using a base the reaction happens at a different place so this is the most acidic proton in this particular system and this proton or this hydrogen is removed by this strong base so shift of electrons takes place which leads to the opening up of the epoxide ring so now we have a oxide anion on a ring junction you already know this is going to be a quite uh, strained system so this is not going to be a stable intermediate this has to undergo charge reversal so let us look at how the charge reversal actually takes place so the negative charge comes between the carbon and oxygen bond and the ring is broken here the cyclohexyl ring is broken in this particular uh, ring junction so that leads to the formation of a triple bond on this particular uh, alkenic carbon with concomitant loss of the nitrogen group and the uh, toluene sulfonate uh, anion so these are all the same conditions which we have seen earlier because once the epoxide is uh, that oxide anion is formed then the charge reversal actually uh, is the responsible one for the breaking up of the ring so the same type of uh, reaction mechanism occurs and we end up with the alkyne derivative so the carbonyl group is regenerated with the alkyne formation and obviously you know the next step is nothing but the reduction using Lindlar's catalyst that is the uh, palladium uh, calcium carbonate in uh, the presence of quinoline so we end up with the cis olefin so this is the most important case because this reaction specifically is used for the formation of cis or uh, uh, z alkene so we can say the product that is formed is the option b that's what we have also seen in the earlier case uh, in the previously also we have seen the same thing the trans alkene is not formed and the other two products which does not have the carbonyl group is also not formed so b is the correct option for this particular transformation